The problem with this debate is that as politicians, as the media, as people in public life, we are not speaking the truth about this issue. We are not being honest about the facts and the evidence. Yeah. And we are not speaking about the extreme danger that women and children will be in if it becomes socially acceptable well, that's quite a big for thing men to, to be able to use I mean, women's facilities there without are two, challenge. There are two things, uh, Miriam, because uh, as I've read out, uh, Lloyd Russell-Moll explained that he should, should have used a more appropriate tone. Has he apologised to you? He's apologised for his tone, but he's made very clear that he stands by his words. And again, this gets can to you the see heart. His point, but can you see his point of view? I mean, you talk about a debate that needs to be civilised um, and reasonable. He has a point of view. He expressed it, he said, incorrectly. But do you understand his, that he has a point of view? It's a legitimate point of view. Well, I, I would question the legitimacy of hearing a woman speak about feeling frightened in a particular situation and raising very clear evidenced points about how if you allow men to use women's facilities, women's prisons, etc., then people will abuse those safeguards and to follow that up with that's transphobic bigotry. But as I said, I don't want to particularly draw attention to that incident All because right. this is happening to women every day in their jobs, in their workplaces, and I am written to by, let's say, old women who are frightened of going to hospital because they can no longer expect a single sex ward. And this is what I'm We've got to be honest in this debate. All right, well, you let's... can't change sex. No. Okay, that is a biological yeah. fact, yeah. and the social consensus, the social covenant that keeps women safe, only works if well, everybody buys into it, and Dave... that's the, the threat that we're facing. Well, 